today we are going to start unit 5 yes for term 1 this is the last chapter unit 5 houses and homes let's find out from this video what is the difference between the houses and homes what is the difference between the houses and homes right so let me start this and understand the concept houses are different type of houses built by human being then animals birds and sea animals right so there is lot of differences there are lot of different types constructed by human being yes birds animals and sea animals right so let's start let's listen to the concept houses and homes yes then we have we have houses uh in a rainy area different from the ones in the desert yes we will understand that type of house also you know houses with sloping roofs in that area with plenty of rainfall or snowfall are the houses built high above the ground on columns called stilts in rainy areas right so i was talking about stilts okay the, the here the uh, we find houses that are built on pole high above the ground which is called stilts remember this whatever we are discussing in the end in the end please try to remember it because it can come in exam also what is a house what is a home according to you what are the different type of houses right so here's a video kindly listen to it right a house is a place made for people to live in the house in which we live with our family is called our home our house protects us from rain wind thief wild animals and heat there are basically two types of houses kacha house and pakka house kacha house is also called hut as you can see in picture these houses are mostly made up of mud straw and dry leaves they are not very strong they are even made up of wood and called wooden houses for this bamboo are also used to make the houses pakka house these houses are made up of bricks iron rod cement etc it is also called permanent house the reason behind this is these houses are very strong and we cannot move these houses they are fixed at one place as you can see in the picture the number one picture shows it's a multi storied building that is if it called a flat and the next one is a bungalow children i would like to tell you thousands of years back the people who lived were called early and these people used to live in caves to protect themselves from the climatic factors and from the wild animals attack they even made houses on big and strong trees but these days you can see this has become a fashion to attract the tourists Houses are also made according to the climatic conditions of the particular place. As you can see, this house is called igloo, and it is made up of blocks of hard snow. And people who live in such houses are called Eskimos. The places with heavy rainfall and snowfall usually have roofs that is sloping. The reason behind is it prevents the roof 
of the house otherwise the water and the excess snow gets accumulated on the roof and it destroys the whole house mountain areas usually have such houses people keep moving on from one place to another place in search of food work or due to extreme climatic factors especially in the villages in such cases they may temporary house tent house is one of the example of temporary house they are either made of clothes or canvas next one is house boat such houseboats are usually seen in kerala kashmir these boats have almost all the facilities of normal houses but again these houses are in fashion to attract the tourist children i would like to tell you a good house is the one in which we can live with our family which allows the sunlight and fresh air to come inside it should have enough doors and windows for ventilation it kills the bacteria and the germ now i would like to revise the whole thing discussed in this video till now basically we studied about the types of house that is kachcha house and pakka house kachcha house is the house which is not strong whereas pakka house is the house which is strong and is made up of brick cement and iron rod according to the climatic factors we have seen people making different types of houses like igloo houses with sloping roof and we studied the people who keep on moving from one place to another place make the temporary house just like tent houseboats and we studied about the importance of living in a neat and tidy Now let's see the homes of animals, right? Ant lives in hives. Bat lives in caves. Buffalo lives in shed. Bear lives in caves. Cat lives in cattery. Camel lives in desert. in shed cheetah lives in savannas hen lives in coop chimpanzee lives on trees Pine lives in burrows. Cockroach lives in homes. Bird lives in nest. Deer lives in bushes. Dog lives 
lives in Kennel. Donkey lives in Barn. Eagle lives in Irie. Elephant lives in forest areas. Fish lives in aquarium. Giraffe lives in savannas. Goat lives in pen. lives in stable. Kangaroo lives in hollow trees. Lion lives in den. Parrot lives in cage. lives in pen rat lives in holes tiger lives in den sadness lives in sea. Sheep lives in pen. Spider lives in web. Squirrel lives in burrows. Turtle lives in sea. Yak lives in hills. Zebra lives in safari. Fox lives in burrows. Now let us find out the special features of each home that explains us why it is suitable for the creature to live in a certain kind of water, land, yes. So let us understand what are the special features of each home and why it is suitable for creatures who live in it. Okay. Here is a video on that. Called its habitat. Like the fish lives in the water. Which is... We already know the surrounding where an organism lives is called its habitat. Like the fish lives in the water. Which is aquatic habitat. The penguins live in the snowy region. The camel lives in the desert habitat. The habitat provides the organism environment to survive and reproduce. For this, it gets the food, shelter, etc. from the habitat. So, an organism gets what it needs from the environment, its habitat. But few components of the environment may cause hardship for that organism too, like the temperature. In the desert habitat, the organisms have to face extreme temperatures. On the other side, organisms in the mountain and polar habitat face freezing temperatures. Besides this, there may be many other challenges or threats an organism faces like the limited food, 
shortage of water, predators, etc. The organism needs to overcome all these hardships to survive. So let us first see the aquatic habitat and understand the life in it. Now, the, we, now it is aquatic, not aquatic. It is aquatic. Habitat means how they survive under such circumstances like fish, whales, whales, shark, blue whales. They all live under water. So how do they have capacity to live under water? Let us understand what are the features that it allows them to live under water. Let's see. Life is everywhere on the earth. Different organisms find different ways to overcome the hardships in the environment to survive and flourish in their habitat. The ocean and the seas form the largest habitat on the planet. This salt water habitat is also called the marine habitat. Some scientists believe two thirds of the marine creatures are yet to be discovered. Surprising, isn't it? The marine habitat has amazing diversity of life from small single-celled organisms to the world's largest animal, the blue whale, fear sharks, octopus, squids, etc. and the nice dolphins too. Most of the creatures on the earth live in the marine habitat. The life exists even more than 5,000 feet below the sea level where sunlight doesn't reach and the temperature is very low. For example, the anglerfish lives at about 3,000 feet depth and the long-nosed chimera lives at 8,000 feet depth. There are many amazing sea plants too. The lakes, rivers, ponds, streams, etc. consist of sweet or fresh water. These habitats are called freshwater habitats. Many fish, water bugs, water lily, etc. live in the freshwater habitat. How do animals adapt to the aquatic habitat? Let us see. All the organisms need to breathe in order to survive. The fishes and many other aquatic animals breathe through the gills. Unlike the fishes which breathe through gills in the water, the dolphins and the whales which are marine mammals breathe air through their blowholes. A blowhole is a hole on the top of the head of the whale or the dolphin. These animals have large lungs so they can hold the breath for few minutes. Now how can the fishes swim so fast? The fishes, octopus, squid and many other aquatic animals have streamlined shape. That is, it is rounded in front and narrow in the back. This shape reduces the water resistance and they can swim through the water easily. The body of many fishes and many other aquatic animals is covered with slimy mucus which makes the body waterproof and reduces the water resistance making the body slippery. How do the animals protect themselves in the water? Many sea animals use the camouflage technique that is getting mixed with the surroundings to save themselves in the danger like the sea crab. Few animals even use the camouflage to catch the prey. For example, the camouflage helps the shark during hunting. If we look from the top, its back is dark. So, it is hard to spot it against the dark sea floor. Now, if we see from the downside, its belly is light in color. So, the creature seeing it from below can't spot it against the bright sunlight. Because of this kind of shading, Sometimes the shark spray cannot notice it. This special camouflage is called counter shading. 
Some aquatic creatures have special defense technique like the squids. They shoot the ink like substance into the water to escape the enemies. And the lionfish, porcupine fish have venomous spines to defend themselves. Now what about aquatic plants? How do plants adapt to the aquatic habitat? Let us see. In the aquatic plants, the underwater stem and the leaves are long and narrow so that the plant can withstand even the strong water currents and don't break easily. The floating plants have air chambers which help them to float. For example, the water hyacinth. You know, the leaves of the floating plants are big and they have the waxy covering which make them waterproof. For example, the water lily, lotus. So remember children, the aquatic habitat consists of the freshwater habitat, that is the lakes, ponds, rivers, etc. having fresh water and the marine habitat that is the sea and oceans having saline or the salty water. Both the aquatic plants and the animals have to adapt themselves to live in the aquatic habitat. That was all about the amazing So I hope it is very clear that animals, birds, then uh, sea animals, plants, human being, they live according to, uh, they and they adapt uh, to uh, climatical conditions. They, uh, they are found in particular areas only. The houses are built according to particular areas only, like uh, those, um, uh, those sloping roofs are basically for so where uh, where the snow falls or rain falls so that it doesn't stay on the roof the water just slips and falls to the ground so so uh, we have just now seen the special features of each home and why it is suitable for the creatures who live in it okay take care bye